Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father God, we come only again to say thank you. God, we thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and God, we thank you in advance for what you will do. God, we thank you for our pastors and the gangs, dear God. God, we continue to lift them up to your God. God, now we ask right now that you bless each and every one that's here on this morning. Some that may be on their way here, dear God. God, give them traveling grace to get here safe. And God, we know there are some needs in the building on this morning. And God, we just say thank you because we know you said in your word that you will supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. God, I pray that you would just let me decrease and you increase, dear God. And God, I'll be ever so careful to give your name glory, your name honor, and your name praises. For it all belongs to you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We thank God again for this blessed opportunity. We thank Pastor Gaines in his absence for allowing me, giving me this opportunity. And I don't take it for granted. It could have been anybody else. So I thank him on this morning. What we, um, our inspiration message will be coming from the 23rd Psalms on this morning. A very, very familiar passage of scripture. We all know when we was young coming up, we used to visit from house to house and there was Bibles open. And what was the Bibles open to? The 23rd Psalm. It was so encouraging. We know God's word is rich, but it's something about that 23rd Psalm. So this morning we'll be reading from the 23rd Psalm, and we know that's the Psalm of David. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou art prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, shook my cup, Run it over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here we see, this is the psalm of David. When David wrote 23rd Psalm, he was up in age. He was an old man. David himself had been a shepherd. We know that when, when Samuel went to anoint David as king, where was David? They was what? Tending to the sheep. And seven other brothers came out. And Samuel said, no, I know there's another one. Go get David. And here come David, a teenager. But God anointed David. And when David was anointed, he was tending sheep. David was not without faults. He was not without troubles. He was not without limitations. David had his ups. And David had his downs. David had tragedies and disappointments, and just like us. But all that David went through, David realized that God was still his good shepherd. Yeah. What about you and I this morning? We have some ups and we have some downs. But through it all, yeah. how many know God still keep us? Amen. He still keep us. We don't get what we deserve, but we can thank God on this morning because he keep on blessing us over and over and over again. And all that David went through, David still was considered the apple of God's eye. Let us look at our scripture on this morning. It says the Lord is. We can stop right there. The Lord is. What is he to you this morning? If I did a survey this morning, each and every one of us would have a different word to say about who the Lord is to them. But we're going to look at the 23rd Psalm as David being our good shepherd. He's our good shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Now that's personal. He said, my shepherd. And we put our name there, we can say, the Lord is my shepherd. That's personal. We see ownership here. And we know God wants a personal relationship. 
fellowship with us. He wants to fellowship with us on this morning. We can, but we can only follow him if we are close to him. We can't follow him if we are distant apart. If he's our shepherd, we got to follow him. We got to obey him. God is all that we need. He's our shepherd. He's the God who was, who he is, and he's the God to come. Everything that God has been to us, he still is. How many know this morning that God never changes? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 103 says, we are, the, we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So we belong to him. If he's our shepherd, we ought to obey him. And then he goes on to say in John 10 and 11, I am the good shepherd. And then he goes on and he say, I shall not want. I shall not want. Here we see provision. God provides all that we need. All that we need. Everything that we need, God supplies it. God is our shepherd. He provides for us, and then he protects us. And as his children, we ought to obey him, and we ought to trust him. How many of us know this morning that God gives us more than we need? More than we ever deserve. God always gives to us. Just as a shepherd provides for his sheep, God provides for us this morning. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for providing for me on this morning. That, that's good news. That's the goodness of God. And the CEV Bible, that's a contemporary English version, say, I will never be in need. I will never be in need. All that God has we, is part of us. He owns a, a cattle upon a thousand years. So that's part of us. He said, I shall not want. And then Ephesians 3 and 20 say, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Oh, think according to the power that work is in us. Whether we need something physical, spiritual, financially, emotional. We got to realize that God, God can do it, y'all. He said, I shall not want. He said, we will never be in need. So if we knew God can supply our need, he said, David is saying, I shall not want. We, should, we don't have to want for anything. God knows our needs even better than we know our needs. He knows what we need on this morning. He knows what each one of us need on this morning when he say, I shall not want. And then he goes on to say, he maketh me to lie down and yeah. green pastures. You know, sometimes God causes us to just rest. Yeah. You know, we busy doing this and busy doing that, but sometimes God will say, I just want you to rest. I'm going to lay you in green pastures. And then he say, I'm going to lead you beside still water. Isn't that good to say that God leads us? Yes. We don't have to lead ourselves, Pastor. We got God leading us. We don't have to lead ourselves. I thank God on this morning for leading us. And he said to us this morning, just trust me. He said, lean not to your own understanding. He said, just trust me. I'm a direct your path. And Psalm 37 and 25 say, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet now I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Or a seed bag and bread. So we know he's going to take care of our needs this morning. And he's going to lead us. And he's going to guide us. Matthew 11 and 28 say, Come unto me, all ye that lady and heavy lady. And he say, I will give you rest. Isn't that good this morning to know? He said he's going to lead us in green pastures. And then he said he's going to lead us beside still water. He causes us to rest. And then he said, he restored my soul. He leaded me, put your name there, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Not for our sake, but for his name's sake. For his name's sake. The CEB Bible says, and you refresh my life. You are true to your name. And you lead me along the right path. That's healing. He said he restores us. You know, we all have different things we're going through life, but know that God says he restores our soul. He heals us. We're not out there by ourselves this morning. He's leading us, and he's guiding us. And when he leads us, we're not going to go in the wrong direction. If God is really and truly leading us this morning, we're not going to go in the wrong direction. I thank God this morning for our undershepherd. God has given us an undershepherd, Pastor Gaines. We know who loves us. 
who have a heart for us. Pastor, you care for our soul. And I thank God this morning that you put up with us. You put up with us. Some of the crazy things we do. And you got a listening ear. We can come to you anytime. You got a listening ear. I thank God for you this morning, being our under shepherd that God has placed in our life. I know I'm not the only one that thank God for that this morning. So as a sheep, we all need to be careful sometimes. Jesus cares for us not only our spiritual needs, but he also cares for our physical needs. You know, I'm reminded of a song that Doris Akers wrote. We don't hear him sing often. It says, lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord. Lead me. How many agree with this, me this morning that we got a mighty good leader? We got a mighty good leader. A leader that's going to lead us the right way. He's going to lead us the right way and he say for his name's sake. You know, all that we say as Christians, all that we do as Christians, should be the glorified God. Let his name be glorified. It's not about us, but it's all about him. It's about glorifying God on this morning for his name's sake. And then he goes on to say, yeah, do I walk. Not run, but I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When we look, evil is all around us. All around us. That's why we got to pray, pray, and pray. Because evil is all around us. And God knows we're going to face evil every day. We don't know what we're going to be faced with when we get up in the morning. But you know what? The CEV Bible said, I will walk through a valley as dark as death. But I won't be afraid. Your shepherd rod make me safe. That's the goodness of God on this morning. We know fear doesn't come from God. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Fear not is found 365 times in the Bible. So every day, if you're facing something, you can go to God's word, and you can find a fear not. We need to know today, we don't go through it by ourselves. We don't go through it by ourselves. He said, yeah, there are walk the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I don't have to fear no evil. Why we don't have to fear no evil? Because he said, thou art. Yeah. Thou art with me. And how many know he promised never, never to leave us alone. Never to leave us alone. And he does the same thing. You know that, that rod David had, it had a hook on it. Yeah. And when the sheep would go out with the wild animals and go out in the thicket, and we know a sheep is not as strong as a lion or a tiger or a bear. But when that sheep would go out, David would pull those sheep back in. And God does the same thing for us. The very same thing for us. You know, sometimes he tells us to go right, and we go left. Sometimes he tells us to go up, and we go down. But I thank God on this morning for that rod and that staff. Because when we get crazy sometimes and start to do those foolish things, what God do? He pulls us back. I thank God for that rod this morning, that staff. He don't let us stay out there, Pastor. He drags us back in because he loves us. And he loves us with an everlasting love. So we don't have to fear no evil because we're not out there by ourselves. We're not out there by ourselves. He said that rod going to comfort us. Then he goes on to say, Thou prepares a table before me. You can put your name in. In the presence of my enemies, thou anointing my head with oil. My cup running over. You treat me to a feast while my enemies watch. You treat me to a feast while my enemies watch. You honor me as your guest. And then you fill my cup until it overflows. You fill my cup. Here we see our good shepherd not only prepare the table for us in the presence of our enemies, but then he arranges the table. He arranges the table. Yeah. Pastor often said, we don't want to pray for God to hurt our enemies. He said he's going to prepare a table for us right in the presence. Right in the presence of our enemies. 
We know Matthew 5 and 44 says, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you. He said, my cup running over. He said in John 10 and 10, he come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And then he goes on to say, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me when? All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for him. Come here, goodness. Come here, mercy. He says, surely, that's certain. Without a doubt, without hesitation. He said, if I go this way, and it seems like God is far away from me, I always got goodness, and I always got mercy behind me. Thank you. 